Hello everyone, welcome to Lecture 14 of Neural Computation, where we will discuss the Hodgkin-Huxley Neuron Model. This lecture is going to be broken up into two videos, uh, and in the first video we will discuss ion channels, and in the second video we will discuss the Hodgkin-Huxley Model fully integrated, uh, and some applications of it to explain some biological observations. So today we're going to take a more detailed look at the mechanisms that work in neurons, specifically ion channels in the cell membrane and models of their dynamics. We will then put these descriptions together into a cell level model of membrane voltage dynamics. The readings from this lecture come from Gerstner's Neuronal Dynamics book, sections uh, 2.1, 2.2, and 2.3.1, with optional reading from Diane and Abbott, section 5.5 and 5.6. Let's start by reviewing what we know about the neuron cell membranes. Uh, the, the cell membrane is an impermeable bilipid layer that keeps the cell chemically and electrically isolated. This cell wall contains proteins, called ion channels, that allow specific atoms to flow through them when they are open, and you can see them uh, marked here on the diagram. Uh, this sort of blue tube through the wall membrane is the ion channel and the arrow indicates flow and these circles are, are membranes both or sorry the circles are ions within the cell and then in the extracellular space these channels open and, and close in response to the membrane potential of the neuron or in response to neurotransmitters binding with receptors it is the flow of ion through those channels that changes the membrane potential of the ion and produces the action potential our goal, then, uh, is to mathematically describe how much current flows through the ion channel, and specifically, the current flow is a function of openness, and we want to describe openness as a function or voltage, uh, sorry, a function of voltage or other cell states. <clears throat> to describe the flow of ions through the channels, we're going to start by describing the distribution of charged particles in electrical fields. The neurons and electrical fields, um, <clears throat> sorry, in neurons, electrical fields arise from different concentrations of ions inside and outside of the cell. From thermodynamics, we know that the probability of a particle existing in a particular energy state, E, is proportional uh, to, let's see here, E raised to the negative energy level divided by some constant determined empirically, uh, K, and then T, the temperature. We can imagine that these charged particles are being in an energy well on this, this diagram we have here. Uh, and to maintain the charged particle at a particular height um, in the well is equal to uh, the voltage times, um, times the charge that is being uh, elevated. That is how much energy needs to keep a charged particle up. And so we can rewrite this potential as e to the negative q, where q is the charge, and then v is the voltage required to maintain that charged particle at height x, and then divided by kt. If we imagine pouring a bunch of ions into the energy well, most of them are going to settle down here at the bottom, uh, and then some of them will statistically bounce around the middle, and maybe even some of them will be up at the top. We can interpret the probability, this probability here, either formulation, as being a density of the ions uh, as the number of ions goes to infinity. And we can um, write that density as the number of ions one would expect to encounter uh, as a function of the distance up, uh, up, the, up the well. If we want to get the idea of the difference in energy to maintain ions across the, the membrane barrier, then we can look at the relative density of the ions across the membrane. That is to say, the ratio of the number of ions on the outside to the inside. And so we can then just plug in this expression here to see that this ratio is equal to e to the minus q, assuming they all have identical charge, of the difference uh, in voltage at the outside versus the inside divided by the empirical constant in temperature. And so we can call this term here delta V, uh, and that is the potential difference across the cell membrane uh, wall. And so if we want to solve for this delta V, we can rearrange the this equation here as saying delta V is equal to kT divided by Q, the charge, times the natural log of uh, the concentration of ions on the outside uh, relative to the inside. 
and this delta v here is called the Nernst potential. The implication of this is that having different concentrations of ions inside and outside the cells creates a membrane creates the membrane potential, and by changing those relative concentrations, we can change the neuron membrane potential. The ion pumps in the cells, cell wall work to maintain a specific ratio of the number of ions inside to outside for each type of ion. Consequently, each ion in the neuron, like sodium, potassium, calcium, and chloride, has a steady state ion concentration difference and hence an associated delta V given by the Nernst potential equation. This potential uh, is called the reversal potential. In a single ion system, the equilibrium potential and the reversal potential would be identical terms. However, when there, are more, when there is more than one ion type in a cell, the reversal potential is a term specific to the ion, and it is the equilibrium potential that is the steady state potential of the, of the neuron in its entirety, or the membrane potential. When the ion channel uh, opens, ions flow in and out of the cell, and the flow of, of charged particles creates a current right, which uh, that changes the membrane voltage. So this ion current is a function, some function, um, as of a, the difference between the current voltage and or membrane voltage and the reversal potential for this particular ion. But now, the number of ions in the flow are relatively small compared to the number of ions inside and outside the neuron, so we can treat the concentration of ions on the inside and the outside as being relatively fixed, which means that we can treat the delta V associated with each ion channel as a fixed property that can be used to model the dynamics. We refer to this potential E ion uh, as uh, <clears throat> as ion, sorry, and the ion stands in for you know sodium or uh, potassium, uh, and so this stands in for any ion that we happen to be talking about. Um, in this lecture, we're going to be talking about pretty much exclusively sodium and potassium, but there are other ions that that exist inside neurons. The difference between the current membrane voltage and the ion determine the dynamics and the magnitude of the current flow for that ion. When the membrane potential, V of T, is equal to that ion, then this flow is going to be very small or close to zero. So no ions, uh, no particles will flow in or out of the neuron, and that's because there's no potential difference to drive the ion channels to seek to reach uh, equilibrium uh, with the reversal potential again. When the membrane voltage is not equal to the ion reversal potential, then the sign of the difference tells us uh, the direction that the ions are flowing, and the magnitude is telling us how quickly. So we see here that if we apply a membrane voltage, or if the membrane voltage reaches 80 millivolts, uh, both of which is higher than both the reversal potential for sodium and potassium, then uh, the the neuron or the ion channels will have ions flowing out of the cell body. Uh, sodium and potassium are both positive ions, so this will make the cell more negative. And this would be an attempt to return back towards uh, the reversal potential for the two different ion types. Um, and we can see here, because 80 millivolts is closer to 67 millivolts, that the magnitude of the ion current for sodium is much smaller than that of potassium. Likewise, when the potential is at minus 65 millivolts, which is somewhere in the middle, we see that there are um, ions are flowing in to get the sodium uh, concentration to reach a, a potential closer to, to positive 67, and ions are flowing out in potassium to try and drive the membrane potential down closer to minus 83 millivolts. And we have a, a similar story here for minus 90 millivolts. High magnitude influx of sodium, low magnitude influx of, of potassium. Um, but what we see is that um, the, the flow of ions is determined exclusively by their concentrations. And if a voltage is implied in the cell, ions will flow in order to reach the concentration equilibrium to satisfy the Nernst potential equation. And this quantity is called the reversal potential because the sign of the current depends on the sign of the difference between uh, the, the membrane voltage and the, 
and the ion reversal voltage potential. Now, if we go back to the LIF circuit, we can ask how we'd like to integrate knowledge of ion channels into this model. Previously, we've used a battery and a resistor here to model the leak current, uh, which modeled current when the membrane potential uh, differed from the equilibrium potential when it tried to uh, return the voltage across this capacitor, which is representing the membrane, back towards some resting or equilibrium potential represented here by E leak. So if we want to model ion currents, then we can follow this technique uh, and add, the ion add ion currents to our model. And we would do it by adding parallel uh, links that have some resistivity, represented by a resistor here, uh, and then some resting potential, which would be, the, in our case, the reversal potential for the ion channels. We know the, the E ion for all of the different channels uh, for a cell from empirical observation. And what we're going to do now is use this to compute how much current flows when ion channels are open. And what we've done here is we've taken the standard LIF model and we've added a battery for each ion uh, and uh, with a potential E ion where ion corresponds to the, the particular ion we're, we're modeling. And it is connected to the membrane capacitor through a resistor R ion. And we know that the current flowing through any one of these branches is the voltage difference between uh, the membrane potential and the reversal potential for, for that ion divided by the resistance R. Um, and this is simply Ohm's law, although we, can, we often can write this in terms of conductance, which is just the inverse of, of resistance. So the current flowing through the ion channel is the conductance times the difference between the potential, uh, the membrane potential, and the ion reversal potential. And that's just really something to do that makes the, the formulation nicer if, if you prefer multiplication to, to division. Um, it also talks, uh, it also lets it frame it in the sense of the ion channels are letting particles through, they're allowing them to conduct through the, the, uh, through the channel instead of providing resistance to the flow of, of ions. And we can write the current through the capacitor uh, as C times the rate of change of the, the voltage across, across the capacitor. And from Kirchhoff's law, we know that the sum of all the currents going in and out of a node has to be equal to zero. Um, and that means that the current flowing through the membrane capacitor is equal to the sum of all the other currents, uh, which is to say the current coming in from external stimulation and then the sum of the ion flow currents. Which means we can now relate the change in the membrane potential to all the currents flowing in and out of the neuron. Um, and as a minor note, depending on, on some the choice of definition of what uh, makes a positive current, then some of these ion, uh, ion channel currents might have a negative sign in front of them. Um, and notice also that we've kept the leak, uh, the leak current. This acts as a way to model unspecified currents that we haven't explicitly modeled with the, with the ion channels we've added here, um, as well as allowing the neuron to have a reversal potential, uh, <coughs> or rather, sorry, we allow the, the leak current to have a reversal potential that is the resting membrane potential. And this channel here just simply allows, uh, allows the neuron to regain its, its resting potential in the absence of other forms of, of current stimulation. Um, however, we know that ion channels do not maintain a constant level of openness, but that they change in response to the membrane potential. And so uh, we rewrite this uh, ion current where the uh, capacitance, or the conductance rather, not capacitance, is a function of the voltage, uh, the membrane voltage. Let me indicate that here with these arrows showing that these resistors are variable. Um, And so uh, we, we know in actual fact it's not just voltage, but it's also neurotransmitters and other internal factors like calcium ion concentration that can change what the conductance is. Um, so uh, 
we then we are just going to explicitly model this as a function of voltage. And this is where we get to Hodgkin and Huxley's major contribution. Uh, they constructed a mathematical uh, model of the time and voltage dependencies of the ion channel's conductances, G ion, that we see here. Um, and they made empirical measurements in order to parameterize the model, and they showed that this model could reproduce the voltage dynamics of the action potential. That is to say, by forward simulating the action, the, this neuron model we're developing, we see the membrane potential, Vt, trace out the action potential spike which is something we have not yet done with the neuron model. We've uh, been using sort of the, the leak integrated fire, the Isakevich models, where if the voltage reached a threshold, we recorded a spike and reset the voltage. This Hodgkin-Huxley model uh, will actually produce the spike in the membrane voltage. And then they successfully showed uh, that it was sufficient to model only the sodium and the potassium ions and the leak current to produce this action potential dynamics. And this brings us to the end of this video. Uh, we've talked about currents through ion channels in the cell membrane, how we would model these currents in a membrane circuit model, and identified uh, shortcomings of constant conductance models, and identified what Hodgkin and Huxley did to improve these models. In the next video, we're going to cover how Hodgkin and Huxley models uh, actually model the voltage dependence of ion conductance.